Hi, this is Joy, and you're watching Craft Nomad. It's a podcast about travel, culture, and craft. It's been several months since I've done a podcast, so uh, actually this is like my third time recording because I found that was a really bad thing, not, uh, not recording for a while because I've forgotten the process. But today, what I'm going to do, since it's been so long, I'm going to kind of give an overview of the travel and the things that you're interested in. You can go back and look at previous videos for more details. Uh, and then um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Mexico and what I'm doing here in Merida, Mexico. So, first... I want to talk about um, Thailand. I lived there for about three years and I want to say a big shout out to Stefan Turner and the Gate Theater. Who, they gave me a great opportunity to participate in some productions both as an actress and also um, assisting and that kind of thing. So that was one of my best experiences in Thailand. Um, what else do I want to tell you about? Uh, okay, so the things that I liked about Thailand, even though I've left there, I loved the hill tribe culture and the textiles. I actually took a class in uh, about the tribal textiles and the learned a good bit about the history there and uh, what the cul current culture is like as far as the textiles. And um, there is a current culture. We still have a number of different tribes living in the hills surrounding Chiang Mai. And so it, it's a very interesting topic if you're uh, interested in textiles. Um, the other thing that's interesting would be the traditional market in Chiang Mai. They have a lot of modern things, but it's definitely worth a look. They have places that have the traditional clothing and all kinds of traditional foods. The food market is very interesting. They have everything that you would need for Thai food and you'll see the local people doing major shopping there because it's huge um, and as far as uh, clothing for the ladies they have the traditional clothes but they also have uh, modern Thai clothes from young designers so it gives you a really feel of the transition and you can see uh, what the the tribal styles are like and also how it's developed, but it still has a real uh, feeling of Thai style. So, uh, language. I tried to learn the language, and it didn't work out very well. Um, part of it was the style of teaching is different, but I think part of it was motivation because the visa issue never put me in a position where I felt really um, I felt I never felt secure w with my visa because I couldn't get a long-term visa and I'll talk more about that later um, so I left Thailand and I didn't come directly to the United States I went to Taiwan and I did a volunteer uh, project in Taiwan and um, what this was uh, was for a nonprofit educational group that helps young people in a small village where they're having trouble uh, in school as far as keeping up and uh, also just uh, offers them opportunities to learn things that are more practical than what they're getting in in the schools the local public schools. They, just like in the United States, have become obsessed with preparing students for college, which is not appropriate for everybody. And uh, it doesn't prepare students for a job, even if they're going to university. 
if they, uh, most of them, if they can't get at least a part-time job, there's no way that they can, can afford it. So they try to fill in the gaps with a lot of those things. But my project was for um, a fundraiser. We were uh, creating some crocheted and knitted projects that would eventually be shown on, in a yarn bombing for the whole village. The yarn bombing did not occur while I was there. It's scheduled to happen next month. I'll let you know if and when I get a date on that. But I want to say it was a wonderful experience. I had ladies coming from uh, really all over Taiwan for, as students to learn uh, to crochet. We had a specific motif that we had de decided on that we're just going to teach them one motif and we asked for donations for yarn which in the beginning we were very worried about if we had enough and in the end we just had yarn and more yarn and more yarn and it was fantastic because um, there were so many choices. The interesting thing was that the high school students, most of them were not very interested, but the ones that were found it very difficult. And hmm, why was it so difficult? I learned when I was about nine and off and on did the crochet. It was never my major thing. Um, but the students had a real trouble with this and manipulating the the yarn and keeping uh, holding the hook in one hand and the yarn in the other and what we found and what some studies have shown is that uh, young people are using their ability to losing their ability to use their hands because of what yeah just using the thumbs all the time so if you're a young person who wants to be in the creative field, make sure you do something to keep your hands active. And if you're a parent, make sure that your, your children are doing other things besides just book work. They need to be doing physical activity and they need to be doing something with their hands. These hands are unique. They're amazing that we have the ability to do so many things, but if you don't use them, um, you lose that unique ability. So that was that project uh, for the summer. And uh, I, let's see, what else do I need to talk about? Oh, I did have a personal project also. And I'll put pictures of the things that I made. The idea was to make a mural with all the seaside kind of creatures. Um, but um, in the end, I decided to just do the creatures and let the students, there were students who were assigned to do the decoration, which will happen later uh, in the fall. And so I just gave over all of these objects to them, explained my idea and said, now it's your project. You can do it the way I, I, I had in mind or you can create something completely different. It's all, all your choice. So we'll see what happens with that. So then I went on to Mexico. Yay, it's fantastic. I am in Merida, which is in the Yucatan, which surprisingly I wasn't really planning on going to this part of Mexico. But what I'm doing for this first six months is um, just trying it out. So uh, I'm going to explain some things that might be useful for you if you're planning to go to Mexico or if you want to know kind of how um, the uh, visa system works. It will be different for every country, but just know that whatever country you're planning on going to, it will have some kind of a system set up and you need to um, 
learn a little bit about that and plan for the kind of visa you want. For instance, if you're a U.S. citizen, as I am, you can get a six-month visa at the border. So on entering Mexico, you can get a six-month visa, which is what I did. Um, you can also get a one-year visa if you apply ahead of time. So my plan is to use the six-month visa, go back to the U.S., and stay a couple weeks and uh, request a one-year visa. And then uh, this is my understanding of the law. Please study or and or go to a lawyer if you need to for clarification because this is just a, a citizen telling you what my experience and my understanding is. So I have the six month visa. When I go back, if I apply at the consulate in uh, one of the US cities, I can request a one year visa. Then there is a, a pathway to a long-term visa and even to citizenship. Um, you have to do the one-year visa for at least four years and then uh, you can apply for a long-term visa uh, as you've shown that you're a resident and you're not just coming seasonally. You can go in and out, but it's best if you, like if you plan to do some traveling outside Mexico during that time, it's best if you have it planned and you state that when you make your application. That's as much as I know. Right now I'm on the six month visa. And uh, how am I getting by? I've been practicing me uh, Spanish, not Mexican, Spanish online looking for classes um, there has been a little bit of conflict with the the uh, time frame and the price uh, I don't know about other cities but in Merida uh, getting Spanish lessons is quite expensive if you go to a private company there are lots of them in the city and they're all quite expensive um, one of the universities does offer Spanish lessons and they're affordable. The problem is they only offer one round of classes each semester and I had a conflict because I am house sitting with two little dogs that are very happy in their beds right now. The last time I, I recorded, they are running around, and at least I got a chance to show them, but you'll see them sometime. Um, so I can't really, I couldn't really be gone on those days uh, because the classes were too long and it, it just wouldn't work out. Uh, they also have a gardener and a maid who come once a week and one of the days conflicted with that so it was just a no-go. So I'm looking for an evening class but also there may be a possibility with my next house sit that um, I can take classes this the classes next semester that I wanted to take. So that's the situation. You, if you are moving to Mexico and a different city, you just need to explore that. And um, you know, if you don't already speak Spanish, I've been living in Asia, so that's why I've been practicing online. But I really need a class. Um, it, practicing online is great for building your vocabulary, but you need to talk to people, and you need to get some. Uh, instruction um, from you know on the university level I took English and I'm sorry French and Russian when I was in university and so I expect the pace to be a little bit more so that's enough about language um, I don't have a lot more to say about Mexico right now. I just know that in future videos, th that's when I'll start showing more pictures and, and telling you more about uh, what's going on in Merida. 
and I probably won't travel anywhere else in Mexico on this visa because I had the expense of moving from Asia and then um, also the expense of the Taiwan trip because it ended up costing me more than I expected so I won't do any traveling within Mexico this six months sometime next year maybe um, after March uh, I'll do that so um, what I'm doing now is house sitting and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because that could be really useful to you if you um, if you are planning on doing the digital nomad thing or just planning on traveling and you're not not about the digital nomad but you want to travel uh, one of the things that you can do is house sit and there are a number of online sites that you can look at so I'm not going to recommend any of them I don't have any sponsors but just do your research uh, you will need to join these and most of them do charge however if you get one house sit it's usually um, enough savings compared to what it would cost you for a hotel or a motel to um, make up for the cost of a one year of uh, membership and so you just go on there and you you can match yourself up with uh, homeowners who are looking for someone to stay in their home usually when they uh, it's either short trips anything from a weekend to like six months to a year depending on what is the reason that they're going to be gone uh, originally it was um, just house sitting about 10 years ago it started and it began to grow and uh, there are home exchanges as well if you have a nice house uh, and it doesn't have to be anything big just a house you can do a house exchange and that's a that's a different route I don't have a house so um, but just be aware that that's something you can do if you have a home um, but the house sitting was originally just having someone stay in the house but it has become more pet sitting than house sitting so just be aware that there's usually a dog or a cat that you need to take care of but there are also homeowners who are looking for people to take care of farm animals um, mostly I think it would be like horses um, not anything major if it's really a lot of uh, you know animals like a herd of animals it's probably not appropriate to be on house sitting they need to really hire somebody but if they just have a horse or a couple of horses or um, you know some people have uh, farm animals that are just pets but mainly dogs cats maybe fish or birds uh, and the other main thing is they want the house occupied while they're gone so you can't just run off and be gone for the weekend uh, while you're doing this and so you want to look for the locations where you would like to stay and then see who's looking for a house sitter and see if you can uh, hook up with uh, a homeowner who's compatible so that's a great way to save money and travel and um, I will have more information for you about Merida it's actually a very nice city and that's gonna come next time so until then happy traveling happy crafting and I hope to see you soon bye bye